the untold story of Jesus' message that will amaze you. Ever wondered what happens when someone experiences not one, but two near-death encounters? Join me, Bella, as I unravel the extraordinary journey of a man who faced a heart attack and ventured into the realms beyond life. This incredible odyssey includes encounters with Jesus, a glimpse into heavenly landscapes, and a plea to return to the living. Stick around as we explore the profound messages and insights embedded in this untold story. Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions and mind bending revelations that will leave you questioning the boundaries between life and the afterlife. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell for more riveting tales like this. Let's dive into the mysteries together. ESTs. Welcome, everyone. Hello. I'm John, and I am honored to narrate the extraordinary near-death experiences of those who have traversed the threshold between life and the ineffable realms beyond. If you find solace and inspiration in these narratives, I invite you to express your support by giving a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, and ringing the bell icon for timely updates. Your engagement is not only free, but also immensely contributes to the growth of our community. Now let's settle in, perhaps with a comforting cup of coffee or tea as we embark on the exploration of today's profound encounter. In a singular night, I encountered the embrace of death twice due to a heart attack. For those harboring skepticism regarding the existence of God, my odyssey might serve as a transformative catalyst. The very moment of my departure from this mortal coil ushered me into the realms of heaven, cradled by ethereal beings on either side. The panoramic spectacle that unfolded ahead held me in rapt awe. Imagine guiding a plane to a tranquil rural airport with a distant light gradually expanding and intensifying as you draw near. This, I believe, mirrors the famed light at the end of the proverbial tunnel, a wall of immaculate white clouds emanating a resplendent luminosity manifested before me. Beyond those celestial clouds, the presence of Jesus awaits. Mounted upon a majestic white steed, Jesus traversed past me with graceful swiftness, moving from right to left. Our movements seemed to defy the conventional constraints of space, progressing sideways while converging towards him simultaneously. As we drew near, his gaze met mine, and with his left hand extended, he proclaimed, It is not your time. In an ephemeral instant, we retraced our path with astonishing rapidity. Subsequent descent etched a vivid memory of spiraling back through the roof of the building. Passing through the ceiling tiles, I beheld the sight of my lifeless form below. At the moment of the heart attack, solitude enveloped me at my workplace, having just returned from the main office. A heart attack triggered by the simple act of plugging in my dead phone. After the initial return to my corporeal vessel following the first near-death experience, the subsequent departure mirrored the inaugural one, hurtling through the cosmos. The sole discrepancy lay in Jesus' words. I told you that your time has not yet come. It carried a mild admonition, devoid of threat, but resonating as a gentle reminder. Upon returning to my earthly abode for the second time, I braced myself for the anticipated physical discomfort. Yet an ineffable tranquility enveloped me, assuring me that all would be well, a serenity beyond the comprehension of earthly understanding. In the midst of this profound odyssey, my wife, stationed 35 miles away at home, remained oblivious to the unfolding situation. Nevertheless, an inexplicable urging prompted her to kneel down in fervent prayer for me. Subsequently, she reached out to my workplace, sensing an unspoken disturbance. My weakened and pained voice on the other end of the line signaled something was awry. I briefly mentioned feeling unwell, completed my shift, and then sought medical attention. Subsequent medical examinations revealed the undeniable reality of a heart attack. Undergoing heart surgery, I emerged from the ordeal with gratitude and a renewed lease on life. It is without a doubt that, without the boundless mercy and grace of God, my presence here today would be an improbable reality. This concludes our recounting of the initial experience. Now, let us immerse ourselves in the unfolding tapestry of the second journey. Same amidst a heart attack triggered by the exertion of shoveling snow, my wife rushed me to the hospital. The doctor's grim observation of a really good heart attack resonated just before I succumbed to unconsciousness. Brief darkness enveloped my senses, followed by the sensation of traversing a void, eventually finding myself in an altogether different realm. In this newfound realm, I found myself amidst a lush grass-covered field, where dogs frolicked with exuberance. 
As a fervent admirer of our four-legged companions, I sensed a profound connection, perhaps with dogs from my past. As a minister, my theological beliefs may not align with the notion that all dogs go to heaven, yet there they were. My journey then transitioned to a different landscape, characterized by a radiant brilliance, casting hues of red and bright luminescence. Here, I encountered an intensely radiant light, akin to a vertical column of pure energy. As I drew closer to this luminous presence, approximately six inches away, I experienced neither the sensation of heat nor cold, only an immersion in pure white energy. It manifested as the divine essence of God, though initially hesitant to make contact, an overwhelming tranquility enveloped me, fostering a profound trust that God would oversee everything, including the well-being of my family, a resonant sacred rumbling. Reminiscent of the lowest note from a grand organ permeated the atmosphere. Not in a frightening manner, but rather awe-inspiring, seemingly emanating from the core of the luminous pillar. In a moment of realization, I fervently prayed, please send me back. Can I go back? If there is any way, please send me back. The subsequent sensation was a jolt from paddles, accompanied by the exclamation, ow, those things hurt. Unbeknownst to me, these life-reviving shocks had been administered 15 to 20 times in the past 40 minutes, teetering on the brink of declaring my time of death. The medical team had informed my wife that all efforts seemed futile, and there was no response. Just as they prepared for one final attempt, consciousness returned to me. Subsequently, I was airlifted to another hospital where I experienced two more cardiac arrests during the flight. A substantial stent was inserted into my heart precisely within the left anterior descending artery. Astonishingly, my heart required yet another restart, but fortunately it resumed its rhythmic beating. The prognosis conveyed to my wife was grim. A high likelihood of significant organ damage and almost certain brain impairment with a potential future confined to a nursing home. Upon regaining consciousness, I discovered myself enveloped in cooling blankets. As soon as my mobility returned, I engaged in conversation and humor, leaving my family and wife utterly astounded. A year later, the sole discernible damage was an ejection fraction, facts of 35 from my heart, through consistent participation in five-kilometer races over the years. This metric has improved to 40. Ejection fraction measures the heart's pumping efficiency, with 50 to 75 considered normal. My ambitious goal is to achieve the normal range of 50 in the future. Post my near-death encounter, I observed an augmented sensitivity to light, particularly sunlight, and an elevated responsiveness to sounds. Over the ensuing years, this heightened sensitivity has progressed to the extent that, during winter with the sun reflecting on the snow, I could scarcely gaze upon it without significant discomfort. As we draw this narrative to a close, it also marks the conclusion of today's video. I eagerly anticipate your reflections in the comment section below. Until our next encounter, remain safe and continue to be showered with blessings.